Um, my name is Daniel Yang. I'm a community organizer. I live on the east side of St. Paul and I work in the south side of Minneapolis. You can maybe go work at a bank and have a really nice car and have a nice home and that's successful. But for me, that's not greatness. Greatness is knowing that you've done something in your community to change the lives of everyday people. Ask anyone who works with Daniel Yang and they'll tell you he meets that definition of greatness. He's touched many lives along Franklin Avenue, putting young Native Americans back in touch with their culture. He uh, brings a skill and an ability to cross um, populations, be it ethnic, age, um, just diversity in general. He really brings a unique approach to, to, to not only work with others, but bring, bring people together. That ability to work across lines may be because Daniel had a multicultural background himself. His mother was Ojibwe and Scandinavian. He spent some of his formative years on the Red Lake Indian Reservation. His father was a Hmong refugee from Laos. Uh, almost, you know, from birth he had it, this, this kind of lens and this idea inside him um, that people are precious and people should be protected and, you know, people have rights that need to be defended and, and all this kind of stuff. Defending others is something Daniel started doing as a teenager. Horrified by news reports of genocide half a world away in Rwanda, he traveled to East Africa to photograph and show the rest of the world what was happening. When he was 15, he was really moved by the stories he was hearing about what was going on in East Africa, and he wanted to go. So he just started writing letters to people, expressing the fact that he wanted to go there, and he wanted to see the people, he wanted to see them. Um, he didn't want to read stories about them. He wanted to see them. He wanted to see their faces. And he wanted to show the world their faces. So he ended up going to East Africa, mainly Sudan, I think. And I learned about the genocide in the Sudan. And so over two decades, two million people murdered, five million people displaced. Um, it was an a Arab, a Muslim controlled government which um, occupied the north and the south were black African uh, animists and Christians and in between um, were uh, oil fields. And so I literally wanted to immerse myself in the suffering uh, and, and, and experience um, what was going on and, and, and seek the truth. Uh, so I went there at age 15. I mowed lawn. I told my parents, I said, all right, go for it, but you're, it, it's on you. Uh, and so I showed up in Nairobi at their offices in Nairobi and I said, uh, I'm here. And they looked at me and I, I was a 15 year old kid and they said, what the hell are we going to do with this kid? Um, I was there, they couldn't turn me back and so they put me on a charter plane up there and within the first three days I had built relationships with the international uh, aid workers there with the UN staff and built that trust with the refugee community. Um, and I just so happened brought my camera. And so the way that he photographed those, pe those, those people, you could, just from looking at them, you just get this sense of reverence mm -hmm. that he had. He brought that yeah. to it, that he had this enormous sense of, of admiration, awe, reverence, respect for these people. And him as a 15-year-old, for him to be able to capture all that wisdom, all that joy, pain, history, love, mm -hmm. you know, in somebody's face, in a 70-year-old man's face or woman's face as a 15-year-old says a lot about what's going on inside him yeah. before the camera even comes out. I remember the first time that I was invited to Daniel's house um, for a meal. You know, it's always, you know, it's, it's those little things. It's not always the big things, but it's, it's ways that we connect ourselves through, you know, breaking bread with each other. And I remember going to his house and I was like, I mean, he has a wealth of art, a wealth of pictures in his house that he has with other public officials. People that, I'm like, how did you connect with that person? You know, how did you get this photo? So he's just a worldly person. He has been around the world, but he is so, um, you know, in the midst of being so worldly, he is just so simple. Uh, in my campaign, I can say personally in my life, you know, he is one of those persons who is in, in just encouraging, uh, who uh, just bring a sense of community, com uh, of commitment, uh, a sense of righteousness, you know. I think we are strong advocates of justice in 
uh, I see a lot of that in him, and that encouraged me. And it's one thing to talk about issues and be able to speak uh, coherently about what the issues are, but it's another thing to take those issues and put it into action. And we could see in Daniel that he had a, a real gift for being able to take an idea and transform that into a plan of action. One of those plans of action was revitalizing Franklin Avenue, an area dominated by Native Americans. Since the 70s, it had fallen into disrepair. The Native American Community Development Institute, or NACDI, had created a plan to turn bars into business centers, homeless camps into green spaces, and add elements of Native American pride. We thought, what about a, a new phase? Let's turn the corner. Let's get into the idea of business development. And what about this idea of a cultural corridor? A big project at that time was the, uh, the start of, of the American Indian Cultural Corridor, that whole effort to brand and think about how do we formalize an identity around Franklin Avenue and some of the historic um, relevance and, and uh, connection to the Native community. My first organizing initiative that I took place in coming to NACTI three years ago um, was the street banner campaign. And it was simply street banners um, that indicate Franklin Avenue as uh, uh, the American Indian Cultural Corridor and it welcomed visitors in English, Dakota, and Ojibwe. And Daniel was able to bring um, really a common um, support for branding a very diverse community, but also recognizing that the success of the Native community, particularly around the American Indian Cultural Corridor, was a benefit for the entire community. So about maybe a year and a half after that process, there was a grandmother that approached me at one of the events that we were, we were holding and said, are you, are you responsible for the street banners? And I was scared because, in a sense, I, she was very serious, and I thought she was going to say she didn't like them. What she ended up telling me is that she was walking down Franklin Avenue with one of her grandsons, maybe five or six years old, just learning to read. Um, and he said, Grandma, uh, what does that say up there? You can tell in Ojibwe, you know, it's a 12, 13, 14-letter word is, is, is the norm. And she, and she told her grandson that this is our language, this is your language. And she told him that she knew how to speak it, or she used to speak it fluently. And so just this little street banner then resulted in her taking him to Ojibwe language table. And so uh, a, a rather low hanging fruit of, of development in, in just the simple banner um, resulted in you know, language revitalization, uh, empowerment and pride in, in language and culture. Community means, um, simply means love. And so Dr. West tells us that justice is what love looks like in public. And so that can go anything from an elder mentoring and helping out with homework with youth, that's, that's love. Um, a neighbor taking in another neighbor because they have been kicked out of their homes, that's love. Uh, even a businessman who hires, who makes it a point to hire people from the community um, and employ people from the community, that's love. So it's not necessarily community benefit agreements or this, it's love. And so I've used that to guide my work in, in, in community. It's not the romantic love, it's not the, the, uh, the kind of sappy love, it's a deep love for your people and for your community to thrive. And, and so that's really guided my work and I see that it guides so many others.